This is North Dakota Today. Joining us, our, our celebrity historian. Yes, I am so excited to chat with him again. And we are chatting about National Native American Heritage Month, which obviously it is November 1st today. So that means we are kicking it off by learning a little bit from our celebrity historian. Good morning. It's really wonderful to talk on the Native American Heritage Month, especially now that Maria Tallchief is on the quarter on the same platform of George, as George Washington. Mm -hmm. Yes, how special is this? So tell us why Maria Tallchief for this honor. Maria Tallchief was America's first international uh, prima ballerina. She was famous for her ballet. She started a, at ballet lessons at age three. She was from Osage Nation. And when she was a kid growing up with the ballet lessons, she would often try it out at you know, state fairs and rodeos, but uh, she was often disappointed because what would happen is there was pressure for her to fit stereotypes in her dress and her dance rather than when she was learning in ballet. Even when she was kind of growing up you know, from a little kid to a teenager, there was pressure for her to change her name, to Russianize her name. This is in the 1930s and 40s we're talking about because at the time, Russia was where a lot of the world famous ballerinas came from. The United States did not really have a ballet scene, but she held on to her name, Maria Tallchief, to represent her heritage. So it really kind of ties into the story here. Now, what's interesting is when she found herself in Europe in Paris Opera Ballet in the 1940s, in her early 20s, she was aged very young, she was the first American of any descent to be performing at the Paris Opera Ballet, and she got a lot of attention because she had great artistry and athleticism. So that is partly how she started to make it big and become an international sensation. Then she came back to the US and she went to New York. And in New York, she performed, of course, the Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. You know, dun 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 dun. She was the first main character, female character in the Nutcracker to really make it popular. It's an annual tradition today over the holidays because of Maria Tallchief, because she was so successful with that. And she took the ballet reputation of the United States and made it famous across the world because she led the way, she paid the trail, and in turn, she also made ballet popular in the United States. So if you or your kids or someone in your family does ballet today, regardless of what their background is, it's because of Maria Tallchief, because she's who made ballet popular in the United States. Oh my gosh, well, who knew? I used to take ballet lessons. This is so interesting. That's right, that's right. Maria Tallchief is the reason now. now, now Remember, you got to look at the money in your pocket. So mm -hmm. if you pull out quarters, these quarters just came out last week. They're in circulation. And so, you know, I have a copy here from the U.S. Mint. Now, these wow. are not yet circulated. I have a special commemorative edition. These are the five women that are honored this year on the U.S. quarter. Mm -hmm. But you can pull it out of your pocket because you can go to the bank. You can even go to U.S. Mint's uh, website, usmint.gov. You can check them out there. Or just look at the quarters that are in your pocket. There, this is part of a program that's known as the American Women Quarters Program. Now, we're, it, it's uh, five women a year that are honored over the course of four years. We're now about halfway through. So she is the 10th quarter in the series. And it's the newest one. They come out every few months over the course of these, uh, these few years doing this series. And it's the first time that we have an entire uh, circulating coin series, like the quarter series in this case, uh, that is dedicated exclusively to women. So it's, an, it's a way to honor women's history, all kinds of different women on there. She's not the first indigenous woman recognized on there either, but she's certainly the only one in ballet and obviously majorly influential. Absolutely. Talking more about those quarters, I see an inscription on there. What does that mean? The inscription on there is in Osage orthography. So that's a native culture and orthography is the written form of a language and it means it translates to two standards so that's her name actually that translates Maria Tallchief translates to two standards in English so that's what's inscribed there and it's really important to have her 
culture's representation on there, not only for the reasons we talked about, but it's important to point out the context. In the 1940s, you have five ballerinas that are coming out of the United States, known as the Five Moons. One of them was actually her sister, and all five of these women were indigenous women that were making ballet popular. Now, Maria Tallchief was the biggest star of all of them, that's why she's recognized here, but the others had uh, star power as well and help shape ballet across the United States. Again, all five indigenous women in this are contemporaries and, and so it's really important to have the indigenous language represented on there. They were not necessarily all Osage, but they're all Native American. Wow, well that is phenomenal. Thank you so much. I know that I learned something. Of course, now just one more thing to point out is she is in the Women's Hall of Fame, National Women's Hall of Fame, and a Native American Hall of Fame. So she's honored in different ways, and she got a Presidential Medal of the Arts by Bill Clinton. And when Bill Clinton gave her the Medal of the Arts, she, he said, how fitting that the person that put ballet for the United States on the world map representing the United States was Native American. Mm -hmm. Remember that money is where nations honor their heroes. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Where can folks go for more information? I would go to usmint.gov. That's where I would go to check out more about the quarter program. And I'd also check out the Halls of Fame that I mentioned. Good, easily accessible online introductory information you can find. Just look up the Native American Hall of Fame or the National Women's Hall of Fame, and you'll get an, at least an introduction to her. And you can kind of go on your learning journey from there. She also wrote an autobiography. If you want to dive a little deeper, you can look up her autobiography and read about her life as she wrote it. She only died in 2013, so wow. it's not too long ago that she was still around influencing dancing in the United States and across the world. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, our celebrity historian. <laughs> Thanks so much. Look Hi. for the quarters. Yes.